Hello, welcome to video number two. Um, as you can see, PPFs and opportunity cost is what we're going to cover in this video. PPFs are, of course, production, possibility, frontiers. Now, I, I was under the impression that this was quite a straightforward piece of economic theory. It's, it's surprising how many pupils cover this and move on and have problems when they come back to revise this. So please follow this very carefully. It isn't difficult and it is at the core of understanding the concept of limited resources in uh, an economy. PPFs, uh, production possibility frontiers, are defined as follows. A production possibility frontier shows the combinations of output that can be produced within an economy given a fixed level of technology and the limited resources available. If you want to go through that a bit more solidly, uh, pause the video now and, and really read and reread that definition. The key point is this. A PPF shows the combinations of output that can be produced. It does not show what an economy is currently producing. It shows what an economy could produce what combinations of output could be produced, given that there is some finite quantity of factors of production, land, labor, capital, available to be used in various ways. By showing us what could be produced, a PPF also, of course, shows us what combinations of output cannot be produced, because it's beyond what's possible. Let's take a look at a very simple PPF. Here is a PPF of an economy where only cakes and beer can be produced. Now, this economy, producing only cakes or beer, must choose how to use its limited factors of production. If this economy chooses to only produce cakes, then it can produce this many cakes, but no beer, because all the land, all the labor, and all the capital is being devoted into the production of cakes. Alternatively, they could decide not to produce any cakes and only produce beer, in which case they would produce this much beer, because that's the quantity, sorry, that's the quantity of how much beer could be produced if they only produced beer and didn't use any land, labor, or capital in the production of cakes. Or maybe some combination of the two, and I've picked out a point here. This point here, tells us that they could be producing, if they produce at point A, they could be producing this quantity of cakes simultaneously to producing this quantity of beer. They have the resources to do that. Now, look at this combination. This combination here of that many cakes, Q2, and that many beer units, um, Q2 there, let's call this combination B, is not possible. It lies outside the PPF. At the current level of technology in the production of cakes and beer, and at the current, uh, given the current amount of land, labor, and capital, that's a combination of output that isn't possible. However, you rub this out. However, I can say that whilst that's possible, and that's possible, and that point's possible, it doesn't mean we don't know actually what they are producing. They could be producing at any point on their PPF or at any point inside their PPF. Take a look at this point here. This is point C. C is this much cakes and this much beer, and it's possible. But because it's within the PPF and not on the PPF, it is possible that they are not fully using their resources. There is unemployment of resources. Because look, look at this point C. This much cake, this much beer. But they could increase their beer without affecting the cake. They could increase beer to this level of output and still produce the same amount of cakes. Or they could raise the amount of cake production without hurting the amount of beer. There is room for improvement. There is room for expansion here in this economy. Uh, they should not be satisfied at point C. They should, economists must try and get on to their PPF because they're limited anyway by their limited resources. 
but they're further limiting themselves here. They could produce more with their limited resources, but they are not on their PPF, they are within it. And, and if an economy moves, let's say this economy moved from C to D, and it moved outwards, and it increased its level of output of both beer and cake, well, that would represent economic recovery. Some would call it economic growth because they've raised their output. The economy has raised its output from where it was. Now, I'm going to be quite loose with my term. I'm going to call that economic growth. Strictly speaking, it's only recovery. D was always possible. Strictly speaking, economic growth is an increase in the capacity of the economy. And we would show that by an actual shift of the whole PPF outwards, indicating that more is now possible. Before, a point here, we call it E, was not possible when we were on this PPF. But now it is possible. It is possible to produce E. What could have caused this outward shift of the PPF, which is economic growth, some increase in the factors of production, either the quantity of the land or the labor or the capital, or the quality of the land or the labor or the capital. But there has been an outward shift of the PPF indicating more is now possible. The combinations of output possible in the economy have risen. Things, combinations of output that were not possible before have now become possible. Of course, there are still more combinations further outside, which may be possible one day if there's enough economic growth, but currently they are not possible. Now, as we educate more people in our society, we increase the quality of the units of labor. As we develop new technology, and as we invent new machinery, a more efficient machinery, we improve the capital. And as we dig deeper into the earth, we get our hands on more of the natural resources, we have more land. And this is what's caused the continual outward shift of a PPF in our modern societies. Um, and that's, that, you, know, you know, economic growth has occurred over the last 50, 60 years at 2.5% in the UK, and something similar at most Western economies. Uh, and, and why has that happened? Because of the improvements in the quality and the quantity of the land, labor, and capital. Let me move on. Um, let me move on. So, let me move on to a slightly more complicated PPF. Because I drew it before as linear, a straight line. But in fact, the reality is that PPFs are probably more like this. Uh, Sorry, this, no, <laughs> they're more like this, there we are, sorry about that, so you'll notice I've curved this, I've not drawn it straight, everything else remains the same, it's still the limit of what's possible, but this is much more realistic. Um, and why is that? And we need to introduce a concept called opportunity cost to show that. Imagine that um, this economy happens to be currently producing here. They're devoting all of their resources to cakes. They are not making any beer. They're only making cakes. Well, that's the quantity that they can make. Let's say it's 100 units of cakes. Fair enough. They decide that they want to have a little bit of beer. They want to increase beer production to one from zero. Well, they're going to have to sacrifice a tiny amount of cakes. If they don't want another beer, they have to sacrifice some more cakes. They're sacrificing cakes as they divert factors of production away from cake production and into beer production. But look what happens. As they make more and more and more of the beer, the, the cost of having beer in terms of lost cake production rises. This is the opportunity cost. So imagine that there's up to 10 beers possible. When they get halfway, five beers, 
they've only had to give up that many cakes, and they're at this point on the PPF. The first five beers were relatively cheap in terms of, expressed in terms of lost cakes. However, the next five beers require the sacrifice of all of these cakes. The, the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth beer productions were very expensive in terms of lost cake production. And that's showing the growing opportunity cost as more, more beer was made, ever increasing amounts of cakes had to be sacrificed to get yet one more unit of beer. The last unit of beer was the most expensive in terms of lost cake production. And the reason that that happens in the real world is that resources, factors of production, are not necessarily perfectly suitable for both, in this case, both uh, types of production, cakes and beer. Some units of production are particularly suited for cake production. Some units, are, uh, so, sorry, some factor units, some land, labour and capital, are particularly useful for cake production and not very useful for beer production. Perhaps a mixing machine, which is used for mixing cake mixture. It's not very good for beer production. So to get one more unit of beer, at the end, you're taking away things that are very useful for cake production and are not very useful for beer production. And to squeeze out one more unit of beer requires an awful lot of these factors of production to be taken away from cakes. So it isn't, as I drew it before, simply a linear, which indicates that every time you want one of these, it's the same amount you have to drop of these. One of these, you drop that much. One of these, you drop that much. It's not like that in the real world. The real world PPFs are probably curved. Okay? Now, so I introduced this concept of opportunity cost. Let me, let me skip over now to a definition of opportunity cost. Um, so opportunity cost, the benefit or the utility foregone following an economic allocation of limited resources. Once we use these limited resources in a particular way, we must be saying we're not going to use them in another way. And uh, that's the opportunity cost. It's not a financial cost, it's, it's, it's the opportunity cost. It doesn't even have to be connected with money. You've chosen economics as an A-level. Well, maybe you chose economics instead of another subject. Perhaps you took economics instead of history. Well, the opportunity cost of your decision allocate your limited resource of time towards economics, the opportunity cost of that is not studying history, the benefit you would have got from the study of history. Governments who are spending limited amounts of, of tax revenue and deciding between, say, healthcare improvements and, and uh, defence spending, um, they're, 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 they're also going, there's going to be opportunity cost in their decisions. Businesses face opportunity cost when they decide between, let's say, building a new factory and uh, investing in lots of new technology for their existing factory. Those two choices, they can only afford one of them, the other one is the opportunity cost. So we're constantly making choices because of our limited resources and the choices that we're making are, um, are causing continually opportunity cost. Uh, one final point, let me go back to um, an earlier diagram here, and let me just clear this up because I want to show you a very neat way of showing changing opportunity cost on a diagram. And you may, you know, this is a very useful way of showing it in an exam, in a test. Of course, it doesn't have to be cakes and beer. A, a more reasonable um, you know, classification of the two goods on the two axes might be capital goods and consumer goods or defense goods and all other goods because worlds with only cake and beer just don't exist uh, unfortunately so um, let me just show you a way of illustrating very neatly how uh, opportunity cost uh, can be seen first of all let's let's put some numbers on this Okay, very simple. The maximum total beer production that's possible in this economy is two. And the maximum possible cake uh, production, let's say, is 10. Okay, if the economy is choosing to make 
10 cakes, it must be making zero beer. It cannot make any beer if it is making cakes. However, if they decide to find their production at point A, they have chosen to make one beer. The opportunity cost of the first beer, the opportunity cost of the first beer is five cakes. Because to make that first beer and to come to this point on the PPF from that point means giving up five cakes. Now, the opportunity cost of a second beer is also five cakes. There is constant opportunity cost because the PPF is linear. It's linear. Every one of the two beers required the giving up of the same amount, five cakes. Okay? That's a product of the constant gradient of the PPF. However, if I show you something similar, and I'm going to go cakes again, and beer, and again, two is the maximum amount of beer, and ten is the maximum amount of cakes, but now I draw the PPF like this, you can see that the first beer now has a much smaller opportunity cost and the second beer has a much larger opportunity cost. Making the first beer only required one cake to be given up. Making the second beer required nine cakes to be given up. This is reality. This is a curved or concave PPF and it is um, more true than the linear PPF. And it's a good way to illustrate rising opportunity cost. Here, as beer production rose, the opportunity cost rose. Simply draw it, take your whole axis, divide it by two. I've done it with two and dividing by two gives one. But show the opportunity cost of the first half and then show the opportunity cost of the second half. And you get this very nice illustration of growing opportunity cost. Here, the opportunity cost was just one. Here, the opportunity cost was nine. Nine cakes were given up to satisfy this economy and produce a second beer unit. Well, I hope that makes sense. Thank you for watching. And um, that was video two. Look out for video three and all the other videos coming up very soon. Okay, looking forward to hearing from you as well. Bye-bye.